Hey guys, it's uh, the piggy bank. You know your favorite little. I mean, I'm speaking speaking a little. To, I mean, we're not that cool. We're, we're we're cool. We're not that cool. Not traditional cool. Yeah, right. We're we're, we're it's casual gaming podcast with the casual gaming buds. I got my two casual gaming buds here. We got Connor Elliott, our guard, and we have Tab and Boffle. Should I start the countdown clock now, or has it already happened? On the eventuality that is Phil giving the Velma show a chance. Well, uh, no, no, it's gonna Why happen because we... you do it. You do these things. These are the things you watch. Is when everyone is talking about something, you do it, whether they're shitting on it or whether they're I'm not, actually. I'm not giving that that show my my viewership. No, oh, that is okay, that is okay. true. I, I fucking love Scooby Doo, and they've massacred my boy. <laughs> they have massacred that boy. Let me tell you what, but. I would have expected it from you because you like to you you gave Morbius your time you gave Venom yeah. okay, both look, Venom one and Venom two look, your time I gave I gave Venom Morbius Venom. I gave Morbius my time if you call skipping through to see if he says it's Morbin time I could have told you he didn't say that they, I, no, don't <laughs> <laughs> I don't care I don't hey guys what's going on anyway that was Tavin and I'm Phil um, don't watch Velma <laughs> please it's okay. already been renewed for a season two. I, it won't uh, get a season three. It's fine. Uh, they can still cancel it, by the way. <laughs> like, they could. Yeah, and they might. Man. Well, then is the whole show out, or is it week by week? It's week by week, it's week isn't by it? week. It's yeah, week okay, week. yeah. So the, it's probably that first episode is getting peak viewership, and then it's going to decline. They'll cancel it, probably. <sighs> they may not. Maybe it'll go six right, seasons well, in a movie. No, I would hate that. They don't even, pivot. Uh, I don't even want to don't talk about this. The only thing that's good about <laughs> it is, is, is the art. Art's good. It's it does it. look good. It does look like a well animated cartoon. Okay. Anyway, it doesn't look bad or offensive. Like, okay, Connor, don't eat with your mouth full, bro. Can we? Can we? Can we stop with the the changing of of beloved characters' uh, races just for just for for people? Oh, well, why why can't why can't they this person this established beloved character be a different race? Why can't they? It's my OC. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, like, generally, I don't really have a problem with it. Like, I don't really care, because in most cases, it doesn't matter. But it's uh, but everybody there... except for Fred. <laughs> yeah, so some cases do matter, and I think, I, 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 Shaggy specifically, I think, is a problem. Like, yeah, yeah, it, ter- it, turning it, that uh, character into a black man is, I not think, even, not, just, not just a black man, a black incel. Yeah, it's it. I don't. I don't Shaggy's know about that. Shaggy's a Chad. I'm, I'm not paying that close attention. Oh, so they've just. That's just not even Shaggy anymore. Well, they renamed oh, him. No, didn't he's they? not. They, Norville, because no, no, his name is actually Norville. His name is Norville Shaggy Rogers. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. No. But Shaggy isn't Shaggy. Yeah. He literally. He, he's not Shaggy. <laughs> <laughs> he has the green shirt. That's about it. He does have the green green shirt, brown pants. Anyway, it just looks like enough that. about that. I I don't. Yeah. No, because no this more. isn't the this isn't the two penny TV show. Yeah, this is cast. not. Yeah. I think I've, I I think mean, I've said that for, before. Except for when we're when we're watching The Last of Us. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> Fair. Yeah. This is this is the piggy bank. It's we're we're on all your favorite podcasting uh, mediums, all your favorite, you know, all that stuff. We're there. Watch us there. Follow us on Twitter. Uh, Twitter dot com slash oh, no, uh, the number two penny games. Come on, man. Um, we're here live on Twitch. Twitch TV slash two penny games, and then you're watching us on YouTube probably. Uh, how else did you get here? <clears throat> but yeah, we go anyway. live every uh, Sunday about 3 to 6, 6.30, whenever we, we finish up our shows. Uh, yeah. Connor takes long bathroom breaks. Um, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, uh, and then also we go live shortly after the Last of Us episode premiere. Uh, so that'll be, I don't know, 10 o'clock-ish, probably. Um, we go live, twitch.tv slash 2 games to react and review. You can catch those reviews uh, later at youtube.com slash 2 games. Uh, episode 2 is out now. Episode 3 is coming tomorrow by the time you're hearing this on YouTube. Uh, so come check that out. At least if you're watching the uh, the Piggy Mank episode. Anyway. Uh, Tavin, what do, you, what do you got for us this week? We're, we usually like to play some mini games here. Uh, oh, wait, oh do we, do we, we're having Connor first? Is that what we said? I don't know, man. Is You're the best. No, I wonder what Tavin does. I, we, we had like a, we had like a rundown before. Okay. Um, Did we? I, don't know. Yeah, I, mean, I, don't I thought you said something. I think I was just anyway. clarifying what everyone was doing in case I needed to switch assets around. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Let's do. I think we should do uh, Connor's thing last. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Let's just let's open with with Tavin. Let's open with Tavin here. Fantastic. So, 
Ladies and gentlemen, me and Phil know what this next mini game is, and it's very exciting. We intentionally kept Connor out of the dark, uh, or in the dark rather, because I thought it would be really fun if we did one of our classic draft picks. However, Connor, throughout the draft pick, is not going to know what the topic of the draft pick is. Yeah. So, Connor, you have to blind pick your draft picks uh, under the, the the just by figuring out who it goes. So I'll go, Phil will go, Connor, you'll go. <laughs> okay. I'll tell you, Connor, it is gaming related. Yeah, <laughs> of gaming. course, by nature of the show. However, you will just have to have to have to blindly pick things. Pull okay. My list so I'll go ahead and start this off with the draft pick again. Connor doesn't know. Uh, I wish there was an easy way for me to tell the audience what it is, but I think it's fun if they have to figure it out alongside us as well. Uh, yeah. The TikTok Don't audience, me. the TikTok audience will know, uh, yeah. of course, because it'll be on on the screen. However, so my first pick, I'm gonna go Spider Man Two. Okay. okay um, I don't know. Yeah, that's, that's a, a good game. pick. It's a good yeah. pick. I like. That I don't pick. know. I don't know if 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 that te- totally fits in what what I thought we were doing uh but i'm gonna go I'm i mean gonna we, go, i texted oh. you about it we had a whole conversation oh no you're okay you're right sorry 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 so i don't know <laughs> my that's a good that's a good pick though that's a good pick spider-man 2 is good spider-man 2 is good uh i'm gonna go kingdom hearts for my mm. first pick mm. Mm. kingdom hearts okay all right i, I have no clue uh, <laughs> there's, there's no connection between those two games i mean tab and i know you you enjoy spider-man 2 at the time but you know it's dated and you're you're I would say that this is like because of Phil's pick of Kingdom Hearts. It's like games that mean a lot to you. Mm, interesting. I don't think that's it at all. Those are um, thoughts. Yeah, I mean, you can, you can theorize. I can't theorize. You know what I'm going to choose? I were to choose a uh, an amazing game, a game that is underrated, underplayed. For my first draft pick, Vampire: The Masquerade Bloodlines. Okay. You know what? I mean, okay. that's not a bad pick. That's a pick. Not a bad pick. That's a pick. <laughs> uh, yeah, it is a pick. Uh, my second pick. I'm going Power Wash Simulator. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. It fits. Fits. Yeah. Yep. Um, I do remember you not telling me your entire list. I sent you like a like a like a image of what my list. I sent is. you all. No, I mean I essentially told you. Okay. But you have uh, it. my it's number. Right. My my set. My next pick is going to be Pokemon Scarlet. Okay, so Tavin wants to be in his fictional universe or whatever that might be. It wants to be a power washer. So I'm assuming it's like video game worlds that you want to live in. Uh, so that's my next my next take on it. Because, you know, Phil definitely would like to be in a Pokemon world. I can see that. Yes, true. Um, so as far as like cool video game worlds that you can live in and they'd be so cool. I don't know, Connor. You know, we all, we all live in a Pokemon world. I want to be the greatest master of them all. Mm-hmm. What the, the master me for sure. About? What the hell are you uh, talking about? That's, I mean, you don't listen to Pokemon music, so. Your second pick, Connor? Go ahead. Um, we're, we're waiting. The classic, the classic 2010 video game, Brutal Legend, starring Jack Black. It's again, not a bad pick. Not a bad pick, Connor. Not a bad pick. Oh, but of course, right, how I, could you go wrong? You know, how could you go wrong? Yeah. Uh, Tavis, I don't know. Your, your, your next pick. My next pick is going to be a little game called Star Wars Battlefront 2. Okay. The 2017 game. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're talking about that, uh, that dice game. Yeah. The dice. Yes. yes the dice yes. for sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 Um, my next pick and uh I might throw you for a little bit of a loop there connor it's gonna be sonic adventure 2 battle all right i don't even okay. know what, i don't even know what the fuck that game is you know what i'm gonna go ahead and assume sequel to sonic my, adventure oh my next guess is games that you guys want remade and so for that reason i'm gonna go the classic bloodborne well, but from software. I mean, it has it has been too long since Pokemon Scarlet's come out. It's true. They need they need a remake. Yeah, yeah. You are a believer you know, in that. Spider Man Two. You know, just totally, totally needs a remake. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I agree. It's called Spider Man Two. Whatever the next one is. <laughs> <laughs> 
My next game <laughs> is going to be Star Wars Episode Three: Revenge of the Sith. The movie tie-in game. That's right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Games that you want to be remade. Okay, this is working well. <laughs> right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna Trauma change up. I'm gonna change up the formula for this next pick. I'm gonna go. Uh-huh. I'm gonna go Clash Royale. Wait, what? I forgot you had that game list. I'm gonna go Clash Royale. Connor. That's a phenomenal pick, Phil. That's a phenomenal. Oh. Pick. <laughs> okay, now I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> now I have no clue. There's no train of thought to be followed here. Let me uh-huh. just say something. Uh, uh-huh. Go with um. Let me fill the Twilight Princess. Mm, mm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, I'll say I'll say Bloodborne is the only one that you were off the mark. I think. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, no, Twilight Princess I think is off mark too. Is it? I guess. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you can have that conversation here. Uh, and then Underrated my final games. My fifth and final pick is going to be Resident Evil Five. It's like the most underrated games, I guess. All right. Uh, well, Clash Royale. Well, I, I mean, I guess this, 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 my final pick would be also underrated. Um, <laughs> my final pick is Monopoly. Okay, and that's not the board game. <laughs> <laughs> Probably a video game my version final pick, of that. My final pick is Monopoly. You have to specify on what <laughs> console. No, I don't. <laughs> yeah, you do. No, there's I don't. So many monopoly, there's so many monopolies. There's monopoly so many is the them. same no matter how you play it. No, you, didn't ask, you didn't ask to specify any of these other games. Yeah, but, well, why do you draw the line of Monopoly? Oh, because oh, yeah. Monopoly is a board game and a video game. There's two different game levels we're talking about They here. both literally have the exact same rule sets. doesn't matter. One's virtual, one's physical. In, okay. the chat, in the chat, Woody the Mighty is telling us to specify. But Woody, you need to, you need to understand what's going on here. So, Connor, I'm going to go ahead and bounce to you about. for your final pick here. Your final My final pick, pick of, of the game... I don't know what we're talking about. Wait, I've you lost. Don't, you don't know what we're picking for. God has you lost know, the plot. Let me go... Uh, let, me, let, me, let me do something real quick. All right? Uh, you know what? No. Let me go... Let me type in video games in my Google search. Uh-huh. And let's see. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Yeah, Monopoly uh, the video game definitely popped up when Phil Googled video games. Mm-hmm. Bong. How about that, huh? Pong? 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 Yeah. That's my next pick. I mean, Pong I'm not mad at Pong. that one. I'm not still, mad at that. Still not even a bad pick for the category. <laughs> That's yeah. still not. Connor, you honestly, your pick, your list doesn't, wasn't terrible. Oh. Uh, so, Connor, do you want to know what it is? <laughs> what right, you want to know what you're drafting for? Yeah. What am I drafting for? Guilty pleasure. <laughs> what guilty is your guilty games. pleasure game? So you're guilty about liking Bloodborne. And yeah, yeah. You about... think you think Bloodborne's a bad game, but you like it. Same with Twilight Princess, yeah. Yeah. How could you say something so controversial? So, so controversial. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, his final picks were, or his uh, Connor's guilty pleasure games uh, were. We started with Vampire the Masquerade, Bloodlines. Mm-hmm. Can you not eat in front of the? Can- you disgusting <laughs> animal! Oh Jesus! I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Let's get rid of him. I took. I got rid of him. He's gone. He doesn't even know he's gone. But uh, what did he say? Vampire the Masquerade, Bloodlines. What Vampire was the Masquerade, Bloodlines. Yeah. What was number two? Guilty. Well, that's not a guilty pleasure. That's an amazing game. Also, by the you way, I took you out of the frame once you started eating in front of the camera like a fucking monster because <laughs> that was disgusting. <laughs> um, what was your second one? Vampire. It Brutal was legend. Brutal, Brutal legend. legend. That's a good one. That was a good one. That is a good one. It's still not a bad game, but like it's just no. it's, you know it's, it's one of those ones that you go back to and yeah, just, for sure, for sure. Enough. Um. Yeah, Bloodborne. Connor, explain in what ways is Bloodborne your guilty pleasure video game? Uh, is, is it weird? Yeah. Is it weird to really like Bloodborne? Apparently, uh, it is. Yeah, because the people in this chat haven't played it because they're bad gamers. So it is my guilty pleasure in this context. I've touched. Oh, in only this context, I touched. <laughs> I couldn't be, you couldn't. I, From there, I, you I, went what? Twilight Princess, and then your final one was Pong. Pong. I don't like Pong that much. Not to give it that much. You're bold. You're bold in saying that you like Pong. That's hilarious. That's so funny. Clash Royale, though, huh? Clash, Clash Royale, Royale threw me for a loop. Yo, when I because we, we we sent each other each other's lists, and when he pulled Monopoly out, I was like, bro, <laughs> Monopoly's a great game. Like I I unironically would play a game of Monopoly every week. I collect Monopoly boards. I fucking love Monopoly. Monopoly's oh. my one of my fucking favorite games. I can send. Uh, I have like a picture of all my different boards. So I think I still have it on my phone. 
Hmm. Oh, that was a good well, time. That was a fun little experiment. I liked that. Funny, yeah. I never could have got to that one. Yeah, but it makes sense. You were so close. You were just dancing around it. <laughs> you were very close. I was. I was. I was surprised. Let me see, it might be my recently deleted. I was debating on the only thing is is like I I freeformed my list. I knew I wanted to start with Spider Man two because I was hoping you were, you would jump to the new game that's coming. Uh, you didn't. You immediately jumped to the old one. <laughs> oh yeah. So, um, it's true. But uh, the uh, it, it was fun watching you you work for it. From there, like I had an order that I thought I was going to go in, but then I I switched it up and changed Damn it up it, and no, so forth. I don't have I don't have a list of all my boards. You just can't be dedicated to things to have them. That's the problem here. Just move like the wind, shift things. Is that how you run a podcast, Tab? Just anyway, yeah, that's how I run. That's moment. how I run my podcasts. Is. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I still refuse to up. refuse to specify whether I'm talking about the board game or the video game. He's, he's yeah. talking about the board game, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Lord alive, I'm hiccuping and burping. You did say you collect them. I didn't know you did. I do. I collect. I collect the boards. Yeah, I've. I think I have at least twenty different ones. Yeah. Do you have one from Holy the nineteen thirties? No, I don't. Uh, I have just like the regular original one. I have one that's entirely made of wood. I have two different Pokemon ones. I have oh. um, a Naruto one. I have a My Hero Academia one. You just got recently got a Star Wars one, didn't you? I want to say it was like I have a Lilo and Stitch one. Thank you, Ash. <laughs> um, I have a Nintendo one. I have I have a Star Wars one like last christmas not not this past christmas the one before you sent me one you sent me one of a new one that you just got did i yeah that you got oh, this last holiday oh, season or whatever. Yeah, yeah 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 i can't remember which one that was though i thought it was like an episode three one and that's why you sent it to me i don't know maybe it was no close. no it was it was uh, avengers ah okay okay yeah it was avengers monopoly yeah connor do you want to play resident evil 5 one. Uh, what have i played i said do you want to play resident evil oh no, I thought we were supposed to play Resident Evil Five. Oh, well, got, got Phil, Resident Evil Five is such a great game that I'll play that. I'll play that it easily twice a year, no problem. Oh, it's easy to play. It's short and it's fun. It's fun. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Oh yeah. Is it like objectively one of the best games ever? No, but no. it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. And there's a lot of funny enjoyment to be made in that game. Especially I'll say. In the first game. I, I do want to. I do want to do that again. We should. We should do that again with um. I don't know. Maybe next time you guys come up with with something, and I'll be the. Yeah, yeah. We should definitely rotate it where uh, you yeah. know someone else will get it or whatever. Um, yeah. Or so forth. If you have any ideas or anything, yeah, that would be fun. Yeah. <sighs> um. So. You guys, I mean, we've we've all been playing. Playing. We can probably say we've just been playing uh, some Fire Emblem Engage. Um. Mm-hmm. I'm. I. I had the. Um. How far into that game are you guys? An hour. hour, I barely played it. <laughs> That's actually being generous. My game clock says my game clock says three. I think I'm actually closer to two because I I find myself putting it down a lot. By the way, we're okay. reviewing Fire Emblem Gage. If you're listening on YouTube later tomorrow, so come yeah, by come yeah. uh, twitch.tv slash Two Penny Games. Um, probably about four o'clock. I am. I'm also like maybe an hour and a half, two hours in. Um, I'm still in that like intro. Um. I I made the the uh, uh, what's the word analogy that uh if I was eating like a chipotle burrito mm-hmm. and I bit into it it would all tortilla right now I haven't gotten into the meat of, of I haven't gotten to like the filling of, of this burrito yet I'm I'm starting to taste some flavors I'll say that much I'm starting to taste some flavors and the the, the flavors I like I like and then some other ones I really don't so it's like oh man I didn't mean to add this on but I am early and we record these a week in advance so maybe my opinion mm-hmm. will change. Uh, by the time we review, maybe we'll it see. does. We'll see. I hope. So. I mean, I, I'm from the way you're you're talking about it. I hope. I hope it does that. It is better than than what you're saying. I will say one thing, since you guys are unaware of this, uh, the opening of that game is verbatim, verbatim, the same as Fire Emblem Awakening. Like really? I, I, I watched it. and I was like, it opens up with a cutscene like that does a little bit of dialogue, does that practice battle that's very similarly laid out, and then the next part that happens when you go back into the game after that scene is the exact kind of thing that happens. It was, And this this game apparently is an anniversary game. It's considered as one, because it's the 30th mm-hmm. anniversary of Fire Emblem, which I think has impacted a lot of the game decisions that they've done with it. That's, Interesting. That's why, that's Maybe why not in the best ways. The, the that's why you got all the past heroes. The engaging mm-hmm. mechanic, yeah. Yeah. 
Um, and the, design, the weird the design of the characters, which is very different compared to other Fire Emblems. Yeah. Yuri but, Lowenthal. I mean, other yeah. than that, uh, I've been playing... Speaking of Yuri Lowenthal, uh, I've been playing... Uh, I've actually been playing a lot of games. You know what? Let me put that on pause real quick and let me divert because I haven't had the chance to talk about it. Uh, near the end of the year, I tried out Immortality, which was getting a lot of buzz for its story mm-hmm. and so forth. And uh, it did not click with me at all. Really? I played for probably about two, two and a half hours. Um, and it's it's a game where, like, you start out with, like, a, a clip of an interview, and you're following the career of this actor, this uh, actress, and um, the oh. idea is that you scrub through footage and click on items in the footage to, like, find new clips. So, like, I'll click on her face, mm-hmm. and then it'll cut to a... Uh, a clip where she made a similar face in one of her movies and then you'll watch that clip and then you'll click on a cup and it'll take you to a different film and like that and you follow three different films and there's supposed to be like i guess like a mystery behind it my yeah. problem is is i i never found what the i'll call the dramatic question was i never found the driving force to keep going mm-hmm. it just felt like it just felt like, okay, yeah, I'm clicking on things and getting more information. There were some threads that I thought were interesting that I was like, oh, is this like a is this a secret gay couple in the 70s? That's kind of interesting. Or like, is this director trying to kill her or something in the 90s? I don't know, man. This is weird. But I never like, yeah. I never discovered like what the question was. Like, what was I looking for? And so like, after, you know, you know, bouncing around for two, two and a half hours of it, I was just kind of like, I'm, I'm a little bored. Like... The performances are good. The writing's good. Um, I did want to find, like, the plots of the movies because sometimes it's just movie clips. So, like, I found myself, like, really attached to, to I think it was the third movie, which was, like, the most recent in her filmography. I was like, oh, I'd like to explore more of that. But, like, as soon as I was like, all right, I'm done, like, I've never felt drawn to go back. And I just I, I just didn't I didn't get the point. Hmm. So. I mean, that, that, that game we, looked like we, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we've all, I, I mean, we've all been wrong before Tavin, especially on record because he doesn't like Elden, uh, Elden Ring, but you know, dumbass, dumbass. <laughs> Fucking but, uh, Connor just coming for the throats today. <laughs> but no, uh, I mean, I haven't tried it myself, so I couldn't, I couldn't tell you whether you're wrong or right. Um, yeah. or I mean, obviously not wrong or right because it's all about your opinion. Um, except, if, except for in the case of Elden Ring, in which case you're just wrong. Dumbass. <laughs> Uh, but no, I, I, I that was one of the ones that was on my uh, radar, kind of like how um, I think last year uh, the 2021 game of Loop Hero kind of got my attention later, like and kind of like earlier on in, in uh, 2022, um, which was a 2021 game that I played just a little late. Yeah. But uh, other than that, because I played that like back in December, I've, I've, mm-hmm. I'm balls deep in the Final Fantasy VII hole. Um, nice. I, fi- um, I finished my playthrough of the original game, and I'm working through remake right now. Very nice. Very nice. Well, um, that kind of goes into my uh, thing. We're going to talk about for my, my my little mini game, or so, so. It's less of a game, more of a discussion. Um, I wanted to talk about like theories mm. how we have for games. Um, and Tavin, you were telling me you had you had some kind of Final Fantasy VII theory, or oh man, I'm deep in it, man. About? I'm I'm deep in it, man. I'm 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 playing all of the games. I played Crisis Core, the original, <laughs> and now remake. I watched the Advent Children movie. Um, Specifically, Final Fantasy VII. F- yeah, Final Fantasy VII. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I've been listening to all the spoiler casts, all the podcasts, all the Maximilian Dude theory videos. I've been doing it all, and uh, oh man, it's deep. Connor, where do I even start? Where should I even go? Yeah. Um, uh, I, I've gotten your stream of consciousness in the past couple of weeks. Yeah, it's like, like, you've gotten brilliant. little tidbits of it, but like I don't think I've given you my my overall theory. And I feel like Connor, obviously, because you've played uh, all of the games as well, um, even more because you played Dirge of Cerberus as a child. Which I went back and looked at footage yeah. of that game. Holy shit, that's a bad game. <laughs> oh, uh, objectively, yes, but no. There's no way if you go back to that game, you would like that game. There's no way. Probably not. Don't go back to that game, Connor. It's really bad. Um, <laughs> and uh, so I guess, and Phil, I guess this will just kind of spoil. I mean, you know, like some of the, you know, like the main twists and turns and the the main death of Final oh, Fantasy VII. Uh, but like, and if you're listening to this and you don't know, either just listen to my crazy ramblings or uh, just skip ahead 15 minutes. I don't know. But 
I, it's like, where do we even, I don't even know where to, where to start. So let, let, I guess I'll start with what makes this interesting. And that is where we are going for part two, which is Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. So the reason this is interesting is Remake was a painfully f uh, faithful recreation of the first six hours of Final Fantasy VII, where they really, like, drew things out and expanded upon and uh, uh, inserted new things to make the world of Midgard feel, Midgar feel more believable and expand on quest lines and expand on characters that weren't real characters in the original game. Jesse and Biggs and Wedge are the perfect example of that, where they are fully fleshed out in Remake. And in the original game, they're just kind of there. Um, even some background characters uh, that you're like, all right, there's a dude with red hair. Uh, and then um, in Remake, that dude with red hair is a character character who's like following you throughout the game. Voiced by uh, Yuri Lowenthal, who, uh, which is why I brought it up earlier. Funny. Until the last like two hours of the game where you're escaping Midgar and Sephiroth has been fucking with you, and this whole time there's been, like, these, like, uh, ghost things that weren't in the original game that have been kind of tweaking with things, and you're like, what the fuck are these things? These are weird. Um, and it is basically these ghosts are whispers of fate, uh, is, is the, the name they're given. And they are trying to keep the player on course and keep the remake faithful the storyline, the, the timeline of Remake faithful to the original game. And you spend the... And what you discover looking back on your thing after you beat the game, you don't know this until the end. Literally the end, you don't know this. Mm -hmm. Is Sephiroth, who has been appearing throughout the game, uh, he appears more than he did in the original game, but you wouldn't really think anything of it. You're just like, oh yeah, Sephiroth's here. Um, but hey, it's... it's you're You're led to believe that Sephiroth knows the events of the entire Final Fantasy VII game. He knows he loses in the end. And Similarly he has... He has so, Aerith as well. Um, mm -hmm. But Aerith plays it way more subtly. Where, like, you have no idea through Aerith's actions literally until the end. Sephiroth, like, keeps mentioning things, and you're like, that's weird that he mentioned that, but whatever, we'll move on. Um, and Cloud is also getting uh, flash-forwards through the game that you don't realize unless you know the events of Final Fantasy VII, and if, um, you're, like, like he sees things that don't happen until, like, ten hours later in the game. Like the plate falling, for example. Mm -hmm. um, he gets a flashback of that in hour three, and that doesn't happen until hour 20. Um, and then, uh, uh, so Sephiroth has somehow gone back in time and is working to change the events of the game. And you end Remake with Sephiroth cuts open a portal and you step into another dimension where time and space have no correlation. And Cloud and the party fight the Harbinger of Fate, I believe it's called, and defeat it, basically killing the, the plot ghosts, the Whispers of Fate, which now gives the creators of the game the freedom to go wherever they want with the next mm. game. If they choose to. The thing is, is, is like where Remake leaves off, the opening hours are going to be exactly the same. You're going to go to the town of Calm. You're going to have the fl the Nibelheim flashback where Cloud gives the backstory of Sephiroth burning down his town. And then mm -hmm. Tifa's going to be like, so you know about this. And then Cloud's going to be like, yeah, you were there. You know. And Tifa's like, yeah, I was there. Because Tifa mm -hmm. doesn't know that Cloud was there. Um, yes. And it, it leads into a whole bunch of shit. Connor, stick with me here. This basically all comes down... Like, I think we can probably expect most of the next game is also going to be faithful to the original game. Up to... And this is spoilers. The big question coming in is Aerith's death. Like, you would What'd probably you say? say... Huh? What'd you say? Who's I death? said the big question is Aerith's death on whether or not that's going to happen. You see, I don't think it is. You, you're of the don't think it is camp. Yeah. Um, I'm worried about Cloud and Tifa at this point. Particularly Tifa. I'm not worried about oh, Tifa. Do they flip it? No, they I might. think Tifa That'd is be safe. Because Tifa's death means nothing. That doesn't... Like, Aerith's death has a purpose in the original game. They don't just kill her to kill her. There's no, a reason the they kill game. 
in the original, original game. game. Yes. So now I think it all comes down to why is Sephiroth still here? Why? Why? How has he gone back in time? Why is he trying to change fate? What is he trying to do? For the most part, so far, he's just been fucking with Cloud. Everything he does is just to fuck with Cloud. He feeds him visions of the future to where, hey, you don't want this. You want to change the future. You, you don't want these things to happen. And Aerith, I think, has also gone back in time. Because what happens in the original game is Sephiroth kills her. But what really happens is her spirit uh, becomes one with the planet. And she starts working with the what they call the life stream, which is basically God. Um, they work with the life stream of the planet to save humanity. Um, but the game ends and they, they save humanity in the moment, but because of those actions, uh, they basically say humanity will eventually go extinct and 500 years in the future, there will be no humans is basically how the original game ends. So you have to sit there and go, if you think about, okay, we're doing different timeline shit now is final fantasy seven, the original, the good ending. And I don't know if it is. Like, arguably, it's not. It's the bad ending. Aerith's dead. The party barely survives. Uh, meteor uh, crashing into the planet is only stopped by the life stream. You assume because Aerith's influence to save humanity caused it to. See, I um, thought it was because Sephiroth lost control of what he was hold- he was controlling at the time. Siphoning it. That is a small no, point. No, no, because they kill Sephiroth for a while. Like, Sephiroth has, is dead for a minute. And then, um, mm. and then they, they, uh, uh, they like escape the Northern crater. And then like the, the meteor pretty much hits the planet. Like Midgard gets fucked up. Uh, mm-hmm. and then the life stream comes in and, and like deflects it. And it clearly takes a lot of energy from the live stream to do that. So I think that, and then the final shot of the game is a shot of Aerith's face. Mm. Um, so it, I, to me, that means Aerith came in and saved the day. Um, but it led to the extinction of humanity. Um, and so what I think is going to happen in this next game is everything's going to pretty much proceed as normal, except, uh, like we're going to go to calm. We're going to go to Cosmo Canyon. We're going to go to the golden saucer, all of these things. It's all going to play out pretty normally. Sephiroth might show up in some new places and fuck with the party a little more. So there might be like, the same events will happen, but how they happen might change. Um, and then I think what it's really going to come down to is when we go to the uh, the lost city of the ancients where Aerith dies, and maybe even the temple of the agents uh, of the ancients where we get the black materia, um, because we still have to get the black materia to Sephiroth, because Sephiroth's body is up north, and he's just like teleporting through Genova cells. I know this means nothing to you, Phil. Um, <laughs> the thing is, is like Sephiroth is now on now has the power on the genetic level. Like he can time and space mean nothing to him as long as there's Genova cells uh, in existence and people remember him. He can go into anybody's mind and go into anybody's thing and like you know that's how he appears in Final Fantasy VII, the original game. And it's how he he shows up in remake all the time is because he's using clones of Sephiroth uh, or experiments that have Genova cells or Genova itself to to appear. The thing is, Cloud, and you know this because of Crisis Core and the original if you played it, Cloud has Genova cells inside him, and it's why uh, he takes control of Cloud in the original game to give Sephiroth the MacGuffin which is the black materia. And uh, Cloud almost kills Aerith himself because Sephiroth takes control and Cloud fights for that freedom. In the final fight, the the, the big famous moment, Connor, uh, where you yeah. do the Omni Slash on Sephiroth and it's the shirtless Sephiroth and they do their, their final fight, that's not actually happening. That's happening in Cloud's mind. Or, or at least my interpretation of that is, is Cloud is going into the depths of his mind to purge the last of Sephiroth from himself. You're talking about right. After, right, right after you get the black materia? No, 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 no. This is at the end of the game after you beat mm. Sephiroth, the recreation okay. of Sephiroth, and then, like, Cloud, like, 
teleports to another dimension, it looks like, and everything's black and in space. It's a lot like the ending of Remake, where he kind of goes there, too. And you'll notice Cloud tries to do Omni Slash on Sephiroth. That's, that whole final conversation of, fi- of seven seconds to the end or whatever is in Cloud's mind. Um, and Cloud loses that fight because Cloud doesn't know who he is yet. Um, so my thought pattern is, is everything is going to play out pretty much the exact same, but as we're playing, there's going to be a parallel timeline because the, the thing with remake is Zach lives. There's a, Mm. there's a alternate timeline where Zach lives, which would drastically change the events of final fantasy seven. If Zach's alive. So what I think is, is we're going to have these parallel timelines going, either through cutscene or gameplay or something, where everything's going to kind of be going the original route, and Zack's timeline will be going through, will be kind of doing abridged versions of us up to that point. So we're going to see Zack in the bombing mission. We're going to see Zack running away from Midgar. We're going to see Zack uh, uh, talking to his own version of the party, which might be the same or might be different. Jesse and Biggs and them might have bigger roles or something. Maybe even playable. Um, and then it's all going to lead up to the Temple of the Ancients where I believe at some point the timelines will converge or something. Some, it, this is where I'm getting murky because I, it just depends on where they want to take it. Adam, when we get to the... Yeah. What you're talking about is no more are writing. You cannot predict it. Oh, it's fucking nuts, you man. Be, it's fucking, they'll know this. It's bananas. I, I'm very familiar with Tetsuya Nomura's writing. But, but yeah. The reason I like this, and I don't like Kingdom Hearts shit, is because there's rules here. And Nomura has to follow them. Like, there, there's, there's press. And also, Nomura isn't the lead creative uh, of Final yeah. Fantasy VII. It's um, uh, the team around him. I forget the names uh, at this point. I had them earlier, but I don't have them right now. Um... Nojima. No, Nojima and... Um, starts with a K, I think. I forget the other one. Um, are, like, sort of the little things. Funny, fun fact, uh, Nomura actually saved the original Final Fantasy VII because Nojima and them wanted to kill the entire party except for the two that would be in your party. And Nomura was like, no, don't do that. Just kill Aerith. We're just going to kill Aerith. That's it. Um, so, like, we would have gotten a drastically different game if it wasn't for no more. But, um, Final Fantasy VII has rules and it follows its rules. This continues to follow its rules. It's just really subtle in how it follows them. And, unfortunately, it uses things like Advent Children, uh, to, uh, and Crisis Core to set up more rules. Where it's pretty well established in the fandom that this version of Sephiroth is an Advent Children version of Sephiroth. Um, the Black Wing is the big giveaway because in your time of the original game, Sephiroth never has one wing. He specifically never has a black wing. There's the big monster version of himself at the end of the game that has a wing, but that's not like, that's not like white one too. Yeah. And it's white. The black, the black wing comes in Advent children. And at the end of Advent children, the whispers of fate are in that movie. They're there and they come in and it's clear that they're trying to stop Sephiroth before he teleports and goes back in time. And the only reason he goes back in time is because he has the powers that he had at the end of the original game. The team kills him, and then the Advent children revive him. Um, and so it, it's all just fucking fascinating. Basically, all part of the plan. we're going to get to the Forgotten City of the Ancients. And my theory is, instead of Sephiroth coming down and killing Aerith, he's going to come down and kill Cloud. Uh, or no, I'm sorry. He's going to come down to kill Aerith and Cloud will end up dying. He will not purposely kill Cloud because he needs Cloud uh, to continue existing. Um, but uh, in some way, Cloud will die. And then I, I imagine in the third game, uh, Zack will take over and like normal version of Cloud. I guess I guess that version of Cloud has powers too. But like he, so, and then we'll run with, the alternate timeline where Zack lives and Cloud has soldier abilities. Um, and that version of those two characters will come across healthy Cloud, the one that doesn't think he's Zack, the one that knows that Zack is his buddy or whatever, right. will um, become our main Cloud and Zack will go back to his timeline by the end of the third game. 
And the entire third game is going to be all about um, fighting the weapons, the the giant, which are basically giant. Uh, what are they called? Giant monsters, like in anime and shit, fucking gaikus or something. Kaiju, kaiju. kaiju's, uh, which are just giant kaiju's that are fucking everything up on the planet because they're trying to defend the planet. Um, and the entire third game is just going to be going around killing weapons, the emerald weapon, the diamond weapon, the ruby weapon. Um, to get, what are they called, Connor? The Knights of the Round? Yes. Yeah. The Materia, yeah. Yeah, which is a side quest in the original game. It's totally optional. I've never done it. Like, mm -hmm. I've played the original game twice, and I never did it. Connor, did you ever do it? No, no, I never did. Yeah. I never even beat all the weapons. No, I didn't doesn't, fight. Doesn't it I just didn't one, shot, one shot Sephiroth to beat it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it just, yeah, it just one shots him. To give you a sense of how strong like the weapons can be, Ruby Weapon, it does not. Ruby Weapon is oh, wow. like ridiculously hard. Yeah. One of, considered yeah. one of the hardest bosses of all time. Yeah. And it, yeah, it's it, it's fucking tough. Um, because I tried to fight w the one that's like flying around and you like uh -huh. have a little thing, and I barely survived that encounter. Uh, because it's not supposed to be like a fight to the death with it. It's supposed to like you just kind of uh, annoy it. So, like, it's just chilling, like, in the ocean somewhere, and you go and bother it, and then it starts flying around, and, like, it'll, like, kind of hunt. I think it's supposed to, like, imply that it's hunting you, but... Emerald you know, Weapon? Um, that I, thought, I thought Emerald Weapon was under the under weapons water. Are there. Uh, I don't... I don't think it's... Em no, it's not Emerald. Diamond? No, because Diamond is a story progression. You have to fight Diamond. Yeah, that's what it was, yeah. Um, I think it's... I think it's Ruby... No, is Ruby's the one well, in the desert. Oh, Ruby's in the desert? Okay. Yeah. Um, well, then I'm not quite sure. I'm, is it not Sapphire? So anyways, uh, I I really think game two is 80% of game two is going to be exactly the same. It's just we're going to keep cutting to Zach and his party doing whatever they're doing. And that's where things are going to be really interesting is where Zach comes into the plot. And then... Mm -hmm. um, because we're not going to have plot ghosts anymore. The plot ghosts are dead. We've killed yeah. them. Um, so now it's just, what are the characters going to do? And at least... Emerald it's Emerald Weapon? That Emerald? flies around? Mm -hmm. Seems yeah. to be, yes. I, thought, I yeah. thought it was from the ocean. Yeah, that's what I remember. Yeah. At least the first half of Rebirth is going to be pretty much exactly the same as the original yeah. game. Uh, where, you know, you just hit, you hit all the locations that everybody loves. You go on the the golden saucer date with whoever you want. I also think they're going to expand that and let you like take red 13 or fucking Sid mm -hmm. on that date or something. You're going to get the tiny Bronco. You're going to, you're going to do all these things. Um, I just think the game ends with, I don't even think the game ends with clouds death. I think we get past that moment. Maybe Aerith still dies, um, but we get past that moment. And because I think the the end of the game is going to be a cliffhanger, and debatably within that story, it's Cloud delivering the Black Materia to Sephiroth, and Sephiroth taking over the Northern Crater, which in turn scatters our heroes and sends Cloud into like his weird like mental state where he's sitting in a wheelchair for the next couple of hours, and he's like lost, and the team has to like break out of prison and go and find him. Um, I think that's a great cliffhanger of. Uh, these kaijus are running around destroying everything. Sephiroth is winning, um, and our party is scattered. That's a good ending to me. Like that, and like that's that's a good cliffhanger to get us to want to do part three. The thing is, is do they change anything in part two um, dramatically, or is it just more small differences? Because if you really look at it, the differences they've done in the first part are very small, almost mm -hmm. minute, almost nothing. Um, all they've really done is told us that Sephiroth and Aerith are doing different shit. And the planet. The planet is doing different shit. Because the planet is also a character. It is. A bunch of complicated shit. I did not break that down well, but it's very confusing. Connor, where it's, are you at? It's, it's hard to, to do that in a non-written format where you don't have it all laid out. Yeah. Points feeding to one another. And, so and if you're not talking to people who aren't on the same level yeah. as you. Because there's so many different layers to this conversation. Where yeah, like, like both Connor, you and I both finished the original game and we both went, oh, Aerith survives. They're probably going to kill Tifa. But if you really think about it, killing Tifa doesn't make any sense. See, the reason why I think it's going to be the death of Tifa is that is the relationship between 
the characters is that Tifa is the one who loves Cloud and whose Cloud ends up loving as well. He's conflicted with Aerith and Tifa, but ultimately they become an item at the end of all of it. So I think the whole one of the jokes that has come about from Final Fantasy, and I love it, and Phil, you will know this as well, being a Kingdom Hearts player, is that no matter what Cloud does, he cannot get away from Sephiroth. Sephiroth just screws with him every single step of the way. The and time. it's it's just gonna be continuing in this new game, you know. Like reverse flash in the flash. Exactly, literally. He, cha- oh, he literally chased him, chased him to the Kingdom Hearts universe. He can't get away from this guy. And, you know, what I think is going to happen is it makes sense for Tifa to be killed. I don't want her to, but if they do, it's, I don't think they will. I, it's, it's all on, up in the air. But yeah. I, I'm, that's my main line of thinking at the moment, just because it's what would, you know, break down Cloud more or maybe cause him to be a lot more reckless in trying to take out Sephiroth, leading into the plans that Sephiroth may have laid. Or obviously his late. The, I, I think what? the problem with Cloud is he's not in love with Tifa right now. He's in no, love with not. Aerith right now. And the yeah. reason is that is because of his psychological damage and his attachment to Zack. Yeah. You know, that's the reason he's in love with Aerith. Zack is pointing not, him towards Aerith. You know, er- and Aerith, Aerith is Aerith. bringing... Yes. It's funny because when Final Fantasy VII, specifically Remake, starts, Cloud is Cloud is pretending to be like this cold-hearted a uh, badass one-liner dude and he's not that guy so it kind of comes off kind of try hard um and there's a moment where like he goes to kill somebody stops and tifa goes yo you're scaring me because he's not acting like himself and Aerith brings that that good boy back out of him you know where he's like a good kind-hearted little golden retriever boy Aerith brings that back out of him um and it's only after he goes on his his trip where he finally figures out who the fuck he is um, where he comes back to Tifa and he falls back in love with Tifa. So all those beats still need to happen and Tifa still needs to... I think Tifa still needs to be there. Also, like, Tifa's death doesn't help the planet. It doesn't help Sephiroth. It doesn't help... Like, the only thing it would do is is, like, hurt the player. Like, the player would be like, oh, man, like... That, that's true. Uh, part Which, of what makes me... To be fair, the players, like, the, the the series, even the original game, is so meta that the players' feelings are just as valid as Cloud's, as Tifa's, as Aerith's. Because the original game, the me- there's the general theme of loss and grief, and when someone dies, they're gone. But there's also a meta theme of you, the player, are not the hero. You know, and you have to think of it, like, in, in terms of the 90s, you know, your RPG character, you just felt, was a was an avatar. You would embody that character, You the player would embody that character and feel like they were themselves. Almost to the point to where you would very often rename that character as yourself. Um, mm-hmm. Final Fantasy VII, the original, goes out of its way to say, you, the player, are not the hero. You're not a badass. You're not cool. You're a wannabe. That's all you are. It's only after you go on the adventure and you go and fight monsters and you go and uh, uh, alter events of the world. That's when you become the hero. So it's telling the player to get off your ass, put the controller down, and go save the planet because the planet is dying. That meta narrative is still here. It's just now it's dealing with the fact that you, the player, knows the events of what's happening. So now we have to deal with that as well. It's so yeah. fucking complicated and layered. And I fucking love it. And I love it because it keeps following its own rules. <laughs> well, something tells me that Fell's theory is about a universe <laughs> that does not follow its own rules. Right. Um, I mean, yeah, but, I already... but, oh, I'm sorry. Just to, just to cap it off. Uh, what you're saying, Tavin, that'd be cool. And it's, it's such an uncharted territory that we're entering. I can't even say that that's likely, even then. Because I really have no clue. How experimental when it comes to I narratives and video games. I love it. Oh, it's so it's pretty cool. cool. It's pretty cool. Oh, wait, wait, uh, I'm really so excited yeah. for you to play Final Fantasy so. um, I mean, hey, I, I'm, I'm excited to... I, I still want to play the remake, so... Yeah. Um, you gotta play the original first. Yeah, it's necessary. Is it? I don't know. Cause, well, no, yeah, because especially if you know the plot, you gotta play the original first. But I haven't played catch up. But I know. But you don't. <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyway... So my theory has to do with uh, what's going on that connects between KH4 and KH3. Mm. 
Kingdom Hearts 3 and Kingdom Hearts 4. Um, funny that both the theories are about Nomura games. Um, He's popping right now, bro. Yeah. 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 Working so, man. So, at the end of the, the DLC, the Remind DLC for Cage 3 um, there is a secret boss where you play, where you fight against um, this. Whenever you, so when you first go to the Toy Story world in the main game, there is a what looks like an ad break for uh, this game in the Toy Story universe called Virum Rex, and it's basically this game that that Rex is playing, um, and the main character is his name is Yozora. And so this is this was a callback to Nomura's uh, failed project, Final Fantasy Versus Thirteen, <laughs> and that's basically what Virum Rex is. Virum Rex is Final Fantasy Versus Thirteen. Um, so this character Yozora, even Rex, like he's like, man, you kind of look like Yozora. Uh, but you know, it's meant to just sound like Sora, that's Sora's name. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, so at the end of the Remind DLC. You run into this, you're in this world, and you run into Yozora. And you're like, wait. So Sora, Sora even says, he's like, you look, are you Yozora? And he goes, how do you know my name? And he's like, um, oh, well, uh, well is this, is, I can't remember exactly what he says, but he's like, oh, it's crazy you're here. And he goes, who are you? And he goes, I'm Sora. He goes, Sora? They told me that they told me I needed to save Sora. And it's like, who is he talking about? So there's a bit where Yozora is like, they told me to save Sora and uh, I went through some, some trials and now I'm here or I accidentally wandered into play- this place and went through some trials. And so there's a theory that in the opening of KH4, you're playing as y- Yozora and the tutorial is the trials that you go through that he talks about. And then the tutorial boss is Sora from KH3. Um, and then... This is within so, the Remind DLC? No, no, no. I'm sorry. That's the, that, This is where the theory comes in. Oh, okay. the Remind DLC is you fighting Yozora and all that. And then he's like the secret final boss. And he's like the hardest... He's known as the hardest um, boss in the KH uh, lore. Uh, because he'll like... He'll, he'll fuck you up. Let me see. Let me, let me go back to my how I what I typed to you guys the other day. It was a little while ago. Yeah. We've had a couple of conversations since then. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Um But yeah, the whole the whole like game within the two the Toy Story world, like it's like a, a game. Like it's in a game cabinet, mm-hmm. like an arcade cabinet. Um yeah. and it is straight up it's straight up Final Fantasy versus thirteen, which is a yeah. not cancelled project, but it's a project that like changed into what we now know as Final Fantasy fifteen. Mm-hmm. Um and like the characters are different and the gameplay design is different and stuff. And it's, uh, it, it, I think it's very clear between the conversations of Kingdom Hearts 3, the Kingdom Hearts 3 DLC also, and uh, Final Fantasy 7 Remake that uh, Nomura feels away about how Versus 13 was treated. Like he's yeah. kind of got a chip on his shoulder about it. Um, all right. So there is this um, when you first run into Yozora. You 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 meet him in Tavern. You, you'll know this. Um, in the beginning of both Kingdom Hearts games, you do what's called the dive through the heart, and it's that bit uh, with the big circular platform that has like either Disney Princess or like Sora and all the other characters around him. It's the big circular platform with all like the stained glass looking stuff all on it. And so you meet him in an area like that, which is w- why it, it it begs the quest- question: is like, oh, could this be a tutorial for for this character? Or like the tutorial, that's why people are connecting it that way. Where is this based off? I'm sorry. Where is this? Where are we getting this information that you you play as Yozora? That's a, that's the theory. Is that is that you'll open Cage for playing as Yozora, and then whenever um you whenever you complete that tutorial, you switch back to controlling Sora. Okay. Um. So, kind of how in Kingdom Hearts two you start playing as Roxas, and then you go into, go into back into Sora. Um. So there's a bit. Where you guys talk to each other. Also, fun fact by the way, Yozora is pl- is voiced by Dylan Sprouse. <laughs> oh, from the Sweet Life of Zack yeah, Cody. Exactly. Nice hell. I exactly. like that. Exactly. Dude, Tavin, Roxas is voiced by Jesse McCartney. So yeah, and that's weird too. 
Who's he again? McCartney. Uh, he's a uh, pop, like a pop boy from like the mid two thousands. I thought that was AJ from The Sopranos. I was gonna lose my mind. Never mind. No, 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 no. Um, but so, so people are saying that the reason that in the Cage Four trailer that Sora looks so different is because, um, so there's there's reason to believe that Yozora recognizes Sora, um, or doesn't recognize Sora. He knows of Sora because he knows another Sora from his world and that basically the kingdom hearts universe that as we know it has been that Sora's like other self, like, like another version of him and like almost like the fake version, like not necessarily um, like a, like a copy, but like some kind of like dream version of him. And that's why he looks different in KH4. Either that or, like, the simpler version is that just an alternate costume a, a la the uh, Halloween Town version of Sora or, like, the fucking Pirates of the Caribbean version of Sora. I just thought this was a wild theory. And I think it, I do think it would be really cool if you if you open up uh, playing as Yozora and it, like, connects that directly with the Remind DLC. I think that would be really neat. Um, but I just thought it was it was really interesting that this that that bit that he talks about and then you have the fight is basically Yozora's tutorial. That'd be so fucking weird. I know, but it'd be really cool. <laughs> are, are you very hopeful about Kingdom Hearts 4 after Kingdom Hearts 3's showing, which was not that great? At least in my um, mind. It seemed to be the general consensus as well. I think the, the original release of Cage 3 stumbled, but then they fixed it with the Remind DLC. Hmm. I think the Remind DLC fixes it because it adds critical mode and it makes it, it gives it a better ending. Because that was the main, that was the main uh, fallout, uh, falling, like, sorry, the main drawback for me for Cage 3 was the ending. I wasn't a huge fan of it. it seemed like the whole buildup of everything leading up to that moment just kind of failed. Well, I mean, Tavin knows this, but the entire middle, middle part of the Kingdom Hearts games where you're going through the Disney worlds doesn't matter. Um, okay. At least that's the that's the case for one and two. Cage three is where it matters the most because you run into the the anta the main antagonists of the game in each world. Mm -hmm. So they they do a little bit of that on like most of the second visits of the worlds in Cage two, but yeah, it, as far as the first game, literally none of the uh, Disney worlds matter in terms of plot. Yeah, but yeah, uh, yeah, Kingdom Hearts is just a mess. <laughs> like, and it's just not. <laughs> it's why like i'm sitting here and i'm like these are cool theories and ideas but when they show up in kingdom hearts 4 and do some bullshit that nobody likes and nobody was expecting yeah. like that will boy, be oh, what boy. i'm expecting is boy oh boy is that game just, fun to play though it's gonna be dumb fun yeah very fun i kind of actually want to play kingdom hearts 3 just because my experience with 2 was so much fun but mm -hmm. like gameplay is good yeah gameplay is good Cage three is a lot more. It's a lot more flashy. There's a lot more, um, like it's very floaty as well. Yeah, I'm looking for four. I'm a lot more air combat. See the, see the floatiness of of the Kingdom Hearts games is what I don't like, but it's better in two though. It was better in two. Two is fantastic. Two two has two has pretty good combat, but yeah. Well, yeah that that was my that was my theory theory just, talk. Connor, do you have anything, or are you kind of just to piggyback piggy uh, backing on to a. Uh, Tavin's talk. Yeah, because I'm going to be honest. Like, I guess the interesting take for me is I don't really have theories for almost anything. Movies, television shows, anime, video games. I just kind of, I, I like to experience it as it's given to me. And now mm. I like to have, obviously, thoughts. I'm not like a mindless drone. Yeah. Goes, ah, I enjoyed that episode of The Last of Us Part 1. And, well, no, I'm sorry. The Last of Us TV show. And then just not think about what else they could do with it. But, yeah. Like I, 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 I'm very limited in my scope when I think about these things. I don't go like off the rocker. I'm, I, I really generally stick to what is very confirmed and what is known, and go off that when I'm theorizing about things. So I never really. I, I was sitting here thinking, and I was like, the most I have is Final Fantasy VII stuff, and that's yeah, that's something I got myself to say. All right. Well, if if Connor, you don't have anything really, uh, let's go and just move into your mini game so we can so we can wrap it up. Oh, I'm going to have a fun mini game of Guess That Landscape! It's a fun one where I post a photo of a landscape from a video game, and you two have to guess what it is and get points. Get little brownie points. Oh, so hi, you Doom guy. Each other face. 
last time I can't remember who won. Who won? I think it was Phil. Phil? Mm-hmm. I believe it was Phil. I think it was Phil. Well, now we're in a new game. So we're I'm in a new game. game. <laughs> Maybe we'll see. We'll see if you guys uh if you guys uh do good on this one. Are you ready for the first one? Yeah? Uh yeah, I believe I'm ready. That is open. We are buzzing in. Show doc way. is or we're we're, we're yes, buzzing buzz. in. Buzz. Yeah. Say buzz, not bzz, buzz. And then whatever Connor hears As is what first. he goes with. Yes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it's coming in three, two, one. Buzz. Tavern. That is... Oh, fuck. It's one or two. That is Dishonored. Yes! Tavern. Hell yeah. Right. It is yeah. Dishonored. Very oh. easy. I think an easy one. Easy one to start you off. Don't worry, Tavern. You you were familiar with it, so you were I, able to I was I was scared. I was like, it's... <laughs> my first thought was Wolfenstein, but I was like, nah, it's Dishonored. I yeah, it does... It, they have very similar, like, uh, like styles. Like city as as, like, looks, buildings yeah. Go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It was the, uh, this the balcony one... gave it away. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah. Yeah. This this might not be the best picture, especially because it's not from in game. You know what? You know what, I think you know what gave it away more is, is the the fucking like guard post thing. Oh, the little box. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Uh, it was just yeah. what what really threw me off is the red drape and then just the the color tones and the cityscape. I was like, mm-hmm. this is from um uh the the first one that they did. I mean, there's shout out shout out to the Hound Pits Pub. That it's for, for, uh, oh. oh, it's right there, isn't it? Yeah, look at that. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Connor? It's all right. Yeah, hit us with the next one. Oh, he's... Heard a he's weird noise. Oh, Sorry. okay. Yeah. Okay, well, I guess it's fine. All right. Uh, anyway, um, the next one, hopefully this comes out well. I'm sorry if it does not. Three, two, one. But? It's more... Oh, shit. Oh, is this Hogwarts Legacy? This is a bad photo. Did you say yes? This is a very no, bad you, photo. It, it cut out for me. No, it's no, it's not. Oh, okay. This uh, is a very bad photo. I'm sorry in advance, but it, it's, um, it's, it's it's stylistic. It's the problem. It's not from the game itself. Oh, uh, Buzz? Bill? Is this Raya Lucaria Academy from Elden Ring? No, it is not. Fuck, okay. Buzz. Tavern. Oblivion. Wrong. Okay, I'll buzz in again then. Uh, buzz, come on. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Skyrim. No, it is not. Shit. Too too high fantasy for Skyrim. Do you have a Do you have a hint? Do you have a hint? Uh, it is a game that I cannot remember if Phil played or not. That hey, doesn't buzz. help me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna buzz again. I don't think oh. I played it. Uh, Witcher three. No. Um, fuck. I don't know. It is okay. Here's here's another guess. Yeah. Here, here's an actual guess. I mean, I should say. A hint. It's actual hint. A game in a series. I'll give you another hit later. This is just the first one. Buzz. Is this Damn. Wolfenstein Youngblood? No, it is not. Damn it. God damn. Yeah, I don't know. I'm trying to think about... I'm trying to wreck my brain about castles, and I don't think it's... Yeah. Uh, should I get this? Should I okay, know this? Uh, I'll, uh, I'll, if it was other I'll photos, buzz again. Yes. I'll buzz again. I'm going to say... Um, if it was other photos, yes. I'm going to say... Fuck. Uh, Shadow of Mordor. No. Can I get not. can I get generation? What generation is this? You know what? This is a better photo. Okay. Hold on. And it'll 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 help. Okay. It'll help a lot more. All right, we gotta we this gotta get a backup photo. photo. We gotta get a backup. I, I should have just done this from the beginning after secondary, I realized this is not good. Secondary photo. Secondary Three, photo. Three, two, one. That that doesn't fucking help me at all. <laughs> oh well. That, this this one I will keep because it is it is from the game. From a shot of the game. Uh, it, uh, so I'll give you another quit, uh, another hint, since this was not a ringing in the head moment. And feel free to buzz ooh, in while ooh, I'm saying buzz, it. Buzz, 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 buzz. Bill. Diablo. No. Fuck. No, it is not. It is... Is, is Buzz, is it Fire Emblem Awakening? <laughs> no. Ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> next, I, next. I didn't hear oh. what your clue was, whatever your... I didn't say it. He didn't say oh. it. Because Tavern was going to say something, and I was like, oh, do you know? Uh, it is, it's a series, it's a game in a series, one of which, a game came out this year in that series. This year being 2023? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. Wait. Buzz? Huh? 
Evan? Fire Emblem Fates? Nope. Buzz, Fire Emblem <laughs> Three Houses? Yes, Tavin, it is. Are you fucking kidding me? Fuck you. Is it really three houses? Garrick Mock Monastery. Yep. That's Garrick Mock? It looks yeah. nothing like Garrick Mock. That's from the very, like, that's like from the opening scene. This is when, when we're, we're walking up on it, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. It is, yes. What Garrick. the fuck? Yeah, it's, it's hard, isn't it? Dude. Yeah. That first like, picture absolutely, absolutely would not have gotten that. Yeah. Like, maybe, like, I can kind of see it, like the, like the church two towers there, but like. Uh -huh. Yeah, what it, the it's, fuck? you never see it this way again throughout the entirety of the game. Uh, uh, so I won because I just ran through every Fire Emblem game that I know. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, like, I, th I was thinking it was maybe like one of the classic Fire Emblem games. This you had to question whether or not Phil's played Fire Emblem Three Houses? No. I couldn't remember. For mean? some reason, for some reason, I was like, did he play it? And I was, yes. I know, in, in hindsight, hindsight, it's stupid. But I was like, I was curious. Let, I was like, Wait let's move on to the next one. <laughs> anyway, next Three. one, please. Two, one. This is gonna be a hard one. Buzz. Oh fuck. Phil. Uh, Grand Theft Auto Four, Liberty City. Damn, damn, Phil. That was good. Right that off was the damn good. Uh, Phil. I thought it was. I thought was we were in one. London. I thought it was uh, Washington <laughs> Legion. No nah, man, it's that's, such Liberty, a, that's Liberty City. If I've ever seen it. It is such a nondescript like city. All right. I. Oh, and this one. Knowing me, be... my next guess probably would have been Empire City from Infamous. <laughs> That would have been fair too, because it looks like a city. But this New is, York. The next one does not look like a city. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, right. It looks, yeah, I thought someone like Spider Man. Surprised no one. Oh, it, it legit looks like Spider Man too. <laughs> the movie game. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The mm -hmm. movie game. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Now this next one is something that I haven't played. I'm already giving some hints. Okay. Don't say it. Yeah. Three, two, one. Buzz. Phil. Fuck. Damn What's it. the fucking planet? Oh, 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 oh! oh you don't oh, need the fuck. planet. You just need oh, the game. Oh, uh, planet, planet, Gaspar. It's a, uh, it's Ratchet and Clank original. It is Ratchet and Clank original. Yeah, it is. It's a uh, Planet Gaspar. Is it? Yes. Yes, yeah, it is Gaspar. The that's the original. That's the original. Let's try to see if it was a remake. Uh, it's having you were upset at that one. I also do think that you should, you should have to have to have the planet, which it's Gaspar. Gaspar. No, <laughs> it's just a game. <laughs> no, I would not do that. Is it Gaspar? Isn't Gaspar the green one? That's it. That's just... No, that's Orcs on Orcs on. Ah, okay, 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 okay. Well, we're at the final one, tied up. I'm like, I'm, I'm happy about this one. I always like the down to the wire ones. It's way much less fun when it's like one person up. So many more points. Yeah. Let's see if you know this one, it's guys. Tied. It is tied. It, it is, is tied. Yeah. Three. Two. One. Buzz. Phil. Fuck! Elden Ring. Wrong. Fuck. Buzz! Tavin. That's Bloodborne, baby. Tavin is correct. God it is it. Bloodborne. I thought, Phil, it was, I, thought it was, I thought it was right, like, you know, the elevator to, yeah, to Ryo oh, Garia? Yeah. That's why I chose this photo, because I was like, okay, none of you have played this <laughs> game, but it could be Elden Ring, so it Damn could throw it. you off. Connor, this is, yeah, this the, is the place you go right after the wolf kills you, isn't it? The Hunter's Dream? Yeah, I know this. Oh, yeah, you played it. Didn't you? It's the hub world, huh? It is. It is the hub world. It's the hub world, or it's just like the beginning like area? Hub world. Well, it's like that's where you go and you like upgrade shit. Yeah. It's where you relax, you take a leg off. You use up your blood echoes. Okay, okay. I thought I thought I thought Bloodborne was less like go back to a place. I thought it was just like continue along the path. Oh, it has the worst go back to the place because of its load times in the original game. Oh, yeah. They sucks. fixed it. Exactly. Oh yeah, they did. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's way, are you way saying? Now. Are you saying it's it's not better than the original Demon Souls? Uh, no, because the Demon Souls one, you didn't have issues loading into it. Oh really? Okay. When you wanted to go it, back, it legit, this one? it legit took like a minute, like yeah. sixty seconds to fifty to seconds. Load. I think was the exact time. Or something. It, oh, every like, time you hit a load screen, yeah. Oh, like Borderlands Three on Xbox One. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it was like was, like because you would load in, you would load out every time you died. Every time, <laughs> like. Oh, the load times are bad on Bloodborne. Rough. I'm going to take this opportunity to say one thing before we wrap this up. The best hub world in any of the Souls games is from Dark Souls 2, objectively. It is a great, great hub area. Is that the only, is that the only uh, credit you're going to give Dark Souls 2? Uh, no, but it's, it's one that people usually don't think of because it's Dark Souls 2. I'll say, but yeah, hub, good job, Phil. The, that was a good the, one. I'll, hub, I'll give that one to you. To you Tavin. Tavin. Oh, the Tavin. hub world or the hub area of uh, Sekiro forgetful forgettable as fuck 
Yeah, it is. That's the worst one. So here's 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 just for the sake of it. That's Majula. Majula Oblongata. Majula Oblongata. Good lighting. Yeah, nice. it's great lighting. That's why it's a good area. Oh, yeah! Get, get us out of here, Phil. <laughs> All right, cool. Yeah, uh, thanks so much for watching uh, us live. If you were here, uh, twitch.tv slash too many games. Uh, you can catch us every Sunday, uh, 3 p.m. to about 6 30, 6 45. We're only a little longer than usual. Um, follow us on Twitter, uh, twitter.com slash the number two penny games. Uh, we're on all your favorite podcast services. Uh, you, we're probably there. Uh, just look us up on, on your favorite one and see if we're there. If you're watching live, we'll be back in a few hours with The Last of Us review. Correct, correct. Um, well, anyway, uh, let's go say goodbye, boys. Bye, guys. See you bye in bye. two hours, three hours. See